Previously, when you thought of a Toyota versus Honda rivalry, Camry and Accord immediately came to mind. However, with Americans purchasing more SUVs, what you're looking at are the two manufacturers best sellers last month, with Toyota moving over 34,000 RAVs and Honda moving about 28,000 CRVs. Well, in this red line comparison, I'm going to go over the completely redesigned 2017 CRV and the refreshed 2017 RAV4, and we're going to find out exactly which one of these SUVs deserves your hard-earned dollars. Starting with the RAV4, as I said earlier, Toyota moved about 34,000 units last month, which makes it the best-selling vehicle in the Toyota lineup for the month of June. Now, you can see this current generation RAV, known as the fourth gen, debuted back in 2013. Toyota gave it a pretty extensive overhaul uh, last year, and for 2017, there aren't really too many changes. This particular one is the SE trim. It's the sportier um, entry or trim level in the, set, in the lineup. Uh, you have standard LED headlights on the SE, which are available on the SE or the XLE, or I'm sorry, the Limited or the Platinum. Platinum models. Uh, they're not a full LED like the CRV. Um, the turn signals aren't LEDs, but you have LED low and high beams and LED daytime running lights. The SE also gives you a slightly blacked out grill, this honeycomb mesh finish to kind of give this a more sportier look. Uh, it certainly looks more aggressive, and I applaud Toyota trying to make the RAV4 look a lot more interesting. Now, this particular one is in a shade of green called Galactic Aqua. It's very unique. I actually really like the color, which kind of has this bluish greenish tint. Uh, the wheels on my SE are unique to this trim as well. They're 18 inch wheels wrapped in 235 series rubber with the black finish. They look really good, especially if you guys decide to go for like a lighter color, like a white with the black finish wheels. Now you can also tell this is an SE from the black mirrors. The other trims will have other, either body colored or non-body colored. Uh, and overall, the RAV kind of has a more traditional boxy shape to it, um, whereas the Honda tries to be a little bit more sleek. Um, when you look over at the rear of the vehicle, um, you have LED accented taillights. Um, they're not full LEDs like the Honda. And I'm a little bit disappointed to see that Toyota also didn't give us kind of a chrome exhaust outlet, especially on this sportier trim. Um, but then again, this is a family SUV, so my expectations are a little bit low. But overall, I think the RAV's design language has aged pretty well, and I really like a lot of the changes that Toyota made uh, when they refreshed this in 2016. As you can see, the design of the CRV sports a completely new design language. In fact, this is the newer vehicle. Honda just released this car uh, about six months ago in December when this all new fifth generation came out. If you guys remember, I was in California showing you guys the full review. Uh, and overall, I think the design still looks modern. It still looks pretty new, to be honest. This particular one that I'm showing you is the Touring trim. Uh, you can distinguish it with the full LED headlights with LED turn signals. It's a very premium looking crossover, especially when you compare it to the RAV. Now, uh, the Touring model kind of has its own unique front end, aside from the headlights, the you know the silver painted lower bumper piece here, this um, gunmetal metallic gray has some kind of some purplish flakes. And overall, I think it's a pretty handsome looking crossover. As you guys know, this is now based on the all-new Civic platform, the 10th gen Civic platform. Now, uh, the size of the CRV uh, is actually smaller than the RAV, which is interesting because this car looks bigger, but the RAV is actually about three and a half inches longer. They both ride on the same 104.7 inch wheelbase. You can see these vehicles are very much identical uh, in size. Now, the wheels, uh, they're an 18 inch wheel design, just like the RAV, wrapped in 235 series rubber. I'm not terribly a fan of this design of the spokes. I think I voiced that in my full review. I think the RAV actually has better looking wheels. Hopefully Honda will change the wheels in the coming years just with a different design. Now you can see the CRV's overall silhouette certainly tries to look a little bit more sleek. It's got kind of more, you know, stretched out proportions. Uh, this area here with the taillights certainly looks interesting as well, where it kind of puffs out to kind of give it a more three-dimensional look. I really like the taillights though. They're a full LED taillight, which is not something you typically find in this segment. Uh, mostly that's reserved for luxury cars. But overall, I think the rear of the CRV looks more premium and cleaner. Love the fact that you have dual chrome exhaust tips. You're only going to get that on the Touring model. And um, all, most CRVs will come standard with a turbo engine. That's something that Toyota doesn't offer with the RAV. And um, to the CRV does offer the hands free power tailgate, uh, but the RAV has that, I believe, on the uh, upper trims, on the Platinum trim, which was new for 2017. Underneath the hood, these two crossovers couldn't be more different. However, they used to be similar until Honda went a completely different direction with the CRV this year. Now, the RAV is going to only have one gasoline engine choice. This is the company's tried and true 2.5 liter uh, double overhead cam four cylinder with dual variable valve timing. It doesn't have direct injection. It's a pretty garden variety motor. Um, it makes about 176 horsepower, 172 pound feet of torque. 
class competitive numbers. Fuel economy is a little bit on the lower end of the scale, rated at 22, uh, 28 for this all-wheel drive model. The front drive models get like one MPG better uh, on both fronts. At least you still use a conventional six-speed automatic. So if you guys are looking for the, more, the most conventional driving car, the RAV may be more to your liking. Now, if you want to follow me over to the Honda, um, Honda actually offers two gasoline engines uh, in this car. Uh, LX models will have the old 2.4 liter Earth Dreams motor that we all knew from the previous gen. This, however, is the company's new 1.5 liter turbo engine, uh, the same engine we know in the Civic. It has direct injection, but it doesn't have VTEC, uh, which is Honda pioneered and what's the, it's what they're known for. Now, the CRV has more horsepower than the RAV, 190 horsepower and also more torque, 179 uh, pound feet of torque. Both engines run on regular gas. The Honda drives either the front or all four wheels through a CVT transmission. So again, the Toyota will have more of that conventional feel with the shifting. The CRV's fuel economy is much better though. This is rated at 27 in the city and 33 on the highway. So if that's something you guys are looking for, you may wanna actually put the Honda higher on your list. The whole reason why people are buying these instead of sedans are obviously for the cargo carrying capacities. And this is where both of these vehicles are pretty similar. Now, when you open up the RAV, um, this SE model does come available with a power tailgate. It's kind of one of the slower opening power tailgates. It also doesn't have the foot hands-free feature. You have to go for the platinum model to get that. But when you open up the cargo area, you can see it's massive. This is way more than what you get in a sedan. Uh, just over 30 cubic feet of space with the seats up. Now, if you want to fold down the seats, you get around 73 cubic feet of space. Uh, and Toyota also doesn't make quite as easy to fold down the seats. There's no release lever here uh, in the rear like the Honda gives you. You kind of have to go over to the side and fold down the seats. Uh, but when you do that, I'll show you guys really quickly what it looks like. You can see you have to kind of fold down this headrest first for it to actually come down. Uh, the floor itself is pretty, pretty flat. Um, and as I said earlier, you get around 73 cubic feet of space. So this is one of the reasons why, you know, you would purchase one of these over a sedan. Now, if you look underneath this floor here, Toyota also gives you a temporary spare tire. So you don't have to deal with a fix-a-flat kit like some of its competitors. Coming over to the CRV, Honda actually made this new model even roomier in the cargo area, which the old CRV already was a class leader in that regards. But when you open up the tailgate here, you can see it's a little bit quicker in how, you know, how fast it opens, which is definitely good, especially if you guys are impatient. But uh, the Honda gives you slightly more space. You're looking at around 35 cubic feet of space, a little bit more than the RAV. I also like how, I notice how the floor seems a little bit lower. It's a little bit flatter than the RAVs. And then when you pull these levers here, the seats just fold down, you know, from a little hydraulic um, lift that kind of pushes it down, which is nice. And you can see very flat floor. Uh, Honda also gives you a little bit of store of, you know, versatility here where you can kind of put this load floor on a lower level to kind of give you even more space. Or you can also look underneath there and you still get a temporary spare tire. Or if you want, you can kind of put this back up on top and make this floor totally level. So the CRV is definitely uh, the one that has a little bit more space. Just know that both of these vehicles are pretty practical to be honest. Now on the inside of the 2017 RAV, you can see getting it out of this thing is super easy, pretty much like everything else in this class. When you shut the door, it sounds nice and solid. Wasn't really expecting that it not to. Now, um, this vehicle does come standard with the Toyota push button start and remote access system. Here's the current key fob uh, for the RAV4. It feels a little bit on the cheap side. I actually really prefer the key in the Honda more, but to start it up, just put your foot on the brake and then push the button here to fire up the engine. And it starts up with the typical Toyota starter noise of their, you know, four-cylinder engine. It's a pretty smooth, uh, refined engine, so I'm not really going to, you know, complain too much about that. Now, the inside of the RAV got an update last year uh, when they completely refreshed this car. Um, this particular SE trim, uh, once I turn the AC down, actually has its own unique, you know, you know, stitching here and there in pieces. I really like the orange stitching on the seats. Uh, and this is actually Toyota's soft text. It's like a leatherette, a synthetic leather material. It feels really nice, honestly. I really like the seats on the SE because they're more aggressively bolstered. And I feel that they hug you a lot more versus the seats in the CRV, which I'll talk about when we get into the inside of that. Now, uh, the rest of this interior is pretty much, you know, the norm. I actually really, it has some nice elements in here. I really like the soft leather or leather material that's on the dash with actual real stitching. It feels really nice. It looks kind of up. Uh, very upscale for sure. The upper portion of the dash, however, is just hard touch plastic. And I noticed some of the, the trim doesn't fit together in the most you know elegant way. There's a couple of sharp edges that are exposed. So uh, I'm gonna knock Toyota a little bit on that. The door panel has actually some soft touch material on this upper portion where you would rest your elbow. There's a chrome door handle. The window is one touch automatic for only the driver's side. The Honda gives it to you on both front windows. So that's definitely nice. Now, when you look at the steering wheel, this is the same steering wheel on the uh, current Camry before the new one's coming out. Uh, it's a nice steering wheel, it's leather wrapped. 
Um, it feels good in your hands, has, has a nice 9.3 grip. Toyota also gives you paddle shifters on the SE, which Honda doesn't give you on the, the CRV, even that top of the line model. Uh, the instrument clan of the RAV also is a little bit on the you know older side. It definitely um, you know looks very traditional. You have your analog tack speedo. The Honda gives you a full LCD display, and then Toyota kind of gives you that small screen in the center there to kind of give you some more information. And now when you look at the center stack here, it's completely old school in the Toyota. Um, you have you know knob for your volume for your tuning. You have all these buttons here. You have dual zone automatic climate control, and this particular one that I'm showing you has the 6.1 inch end tune system without nav. If you guys go for an advanced tech package, you'll get a seven inch screen. Um, so just know that this is the smaller one. It doesn't have Android Auto or CarPlay. Toyota still doesn't do that yet, um, but it does have end tune, which is kind of their version of that. If you download the app now, when you put the vehicle into reverse, you have a backup camera uh, with you know the trajectory, uh, the distance markers. The Rav is available with a 360 camera system, which the Honda doesn't offer. If you guys go for that advanced tech package, now looking at the center stack here, you can see. It's pretty much traditional and kind of old school again. You have your buttons here for your eco and sport mode. Your heated seat controls are down here, which kind of look a little bit like an afterthought. Toyota puts your USB and aux port there along with another power outlet. There's some good storage down here. Uh, this controls the six-speed automatic transmission with you know an old school gated shifter. Um, so you know everything about the Toyota, right down to the, the old school, you know, hand, pull-up handbrake is very traditional. I like the fact that the armrest here slides and adjusts. There's two levels of storage, uh, and my tester has a sunroof. Uh, no pain. Handoff starting roof is available on either model. You have to go for like a Rogue or a Hyundai Tucson or you know Kia Sportage if you guys want the panel center feature. But overall, I think the Rav's interior definitely looks more you know, old school, traditional. Uh, it's you sit up nice and high. It's nice and roomy. So I think a lot of you who prefer you know more traditional knobs and buttons, you're going to prefer the cabin of this over the Honda. Just like the front seats, the rear seats are also a very important buying aspect if you guys are looking in this class. And you can see both vehicles don't really disappoint. The RAV has plentiful amounts of space. I really like the fact that the floor here is almost completely flat, so you could actually put three people across. Now, when you shut the door, it sounds pretty much as solid as the front. The materials back here are hard touch plastic though, whereas the, the front door panels have the soft touch material. Uh, but you know, overall, um, the seat back itself, it is re adjustable. It reclines forward and back, just like the CRVs, but the Toyota gives you a little bit more degrees of, of reclining ability versus the Honda only has like one click back or one click forward, whereas the Toyota will give you several different you know options if you guys choose to do so. Uh, there are no rear seat vents back here, and there's only one 12 volt power outlet here as well. There's no USB ports, which I'll show you guys in the Honda. Toyota at least gives you two map pockets, and then there's still you know an armrest right here with some cup holders. Uh, so if you guys only have two people, you can actually you know get a little bit more comfortable. Now when you step inside the interior of the CRV. This is where the Honda immediately feels a lot more modern. This is a newer design. I'm not really surprised by that. When you shut the door, it sounds just as solid as pretty much the RAV. So, you know, when it comes to the, you know, that feature, they both are identical. Now to start the vehicle up, again, like the RAV, just put your foot on the brake, push this button here to fire up the engine. And I'm immediately noticing the Honda's engine is a little bit quieter. I mean, this is a smaller engine. It also doesn't really sound like a typical Honda engine. This is an all new engine design. So those of you who are used to your K series motors, you're gonna get into this and find it to be a little bit different. Now, uh, here's the key fob for the vehicle. Um, EX and up trims will come standard with Honda's smart key access system. It does come with remote start. The Toyota does not. You have to have add a dealer accessory, which is like 500 bucks if you guys want remote start. So you may wanna you know, consider that if you guys are prefer looking for that feature. Now, looking at the rest of the interior of the Honda, you sit up nice and high. It's really easy to get in and out of just like the RAV or anything else in this class. Uh, but I'm definitely noticing the seats in this vehicle. Um, they don't hug you quite as much, um, but they look a lot more expensive. These literally look like they were pulled out of a luxury car, um, but th they're just as comfortable. Just know that I preferred how the bolsters in the RAV kind of hugged you a little bit more. The Honda does give you a 12-way power driver seat. The Toyota only maxes out at like eight-way. Um, the passenger seat is only four-way on both models, so they're pretty much even in that regards. Now, when you look at the rest of the interior design, the CRVs looks a lot more upscale. I'm not really convinced about this plastic wood that's on the dash and the door panels. They don't convince me at all. It looks a little bit tacky, to be honest, but there's some faux stitching on the dash where it's soft touch. It's not the real stitching like the Toyota. This upper portion here is also soft touch, so that's nice. Uh, and then when you look at the door panels, more of that faux stitching where it's also soft touch, more of that fake wood, and then some leather stitching right here. As I mentioned in the RAV, uh, this is one touch for both front windows, so that's definitely nice. And the steering wheel, as you can see, 
It's the same steering wheel out of the new Civic. It's leather wrapped. It feels really good in your hands. Lots of buttons on here. There's a, a touch sensitive, you know, volume adjustment here on the wheel, which takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, and to for some reason, Honda decided not to give you paddle shifters, even though, you know, this is the touring model with, you know, a sport mode in here. It would be nice to have that. Now, looking at the instrument panel, this is where the, the Honda looks completely different. You've got a full LCD display there for the Speedo and TAC, which is customizable. You can, you know, pretty much change how you want these views to look, which definitely makes this look a little bit more modern. The TAC looks a little bit weird, and some of you may not like the digital Speedo. So if you prefer a traditional analog Speedo and TAC, you may want to look into the, the RAVs interior. Looking at the center stack here, you can also see it's very modern looking. This very clean seven inch LCD display, it's part of the Honda Link system. It looks like almost like a tablet on the dashboard. Um, love the fact that Honda returned a volume knob for the CRV. That was a complaint that they dealt with in the, in the Civic and the refreshed Accord. Uh, and this is pretty much the Honda Link system. It's got navigation, navigation, which is a Garmin based navigation. It also has Android Auto and CarPlay. So again, on the tech front, the CRV is definitely the better option there. Now, when you put the vehicle into reverse, you also get a backup camera with three different views. It's got rear cross traffic alert, just like the RAV. Um, and the camera itself, it's got trajectory. No parking sensors are available and there's no 360 camera available like in the RAV if you guys, you know, decide to go for that that trim. Um, Honda also gives you an electronic parking brake here. You have three level heated seats instead of the two level on the RAV and you have dual zone climate control. Now this controls the CVT transmission. I'm surprised they didn't go with a you know a push button shifter but I also like I prefer a shifter like this uh, although it does take up a little bit more space in the dash uh, but even though it does have that there's lots of storage down here you can see there's a power outlet here there's cup holders here there's places to put your phone this kind of slides forward and back to reveal two USB ports in there and like a bunch of storage you can hide your crap in there the armrest here moves up and down or forward and back and there's also you know storage even there you can take this little piece out if you guys want to just have this can be completely opened uh, the CRV uh, EX and up trims come standard with a sunroof no panel roof is available on the CRV as well but I mean overall in terms of roominess, I have to say, I think the Honda feels a little bit roomier, um, but I think the Toyota gave you a slightly better view of the road because the hood on the Honda sits up a little bit higher. Stepping inside the rear seat of the CRV, you can see this is where Honda kind of paid a little bit more attention to detail with the rear seat passengers. Now, when you shut the door, sounds just as solid as the front. Um, now, a couple of things I'm noticing immediately. There's vents back here, and Honda decided to give you two, you know, USB quick charging ports right there for when your kids are complaining about how their iPads are starting to go dead. Now, uh, the materials back here, they're pretty identical to the front, although it is hard-touch plastic here with some fake stitching, more of that fake wood. Um, I like the fact that Honda kind of gave us, you know, additional speakers back here. There's a small little tweeter here in the door because the CRV actually has nine speakers as opposed to the RAV, which has only six speakers. Now, the floor is pretty much flat back here as well so you can easily fit through your cross. I feel like the Honda has more leg room so if that's important for you you're going to want to go for the CRV. The seats themselves also recline back but not quite as far and Honda still gives you you know uh, an armrest here with some cup holders so if you guys only have two it's pretty comfortable back here if you guys uh, for only have two passengers in the rear. So first settling into the 2017 RAV4 SE immediately I'm noticing um, how much the seats hug you and I really like the seats honestly this is Toyota's soft fake leather uh, and it actually feels really good it's it feels like real leather it's soft it's supportive and I really enjoy the uh, more aggressive bolstering that Toyota includes on this uh, particular trim level So the RAV4 is definitely not fast, which is a pity because if you guys remember the previous generation RAV, it offered a fire-breathing V6, which had like 268 horsepower. It was one of the quickest SUVs in the segment. For this generation, Toyota only offers just one gas engine, the 2.5 liter four from the Camry. Updated, of course, Toyota swapped out the old four-speed auto for the six-speed automatic. Now this powertrain um, definitely is proven, it's reliable, and honestly, it gets the job done just fine. For the majority of people who buy a car in this segment, this will be enough motor for most of you. And if you look at the zero to 60 times, it, they're around nine seconds for the RAV with this engine, which is definitely a lot slower uh, than the new CRV with its turbo engine. 
But those of you who appreciate a traditional automatic, you're really going to get into this car and just love the simplicity, love the conventional feel. It's got, you know, stepped gears. Um, the engine makes the typical Toyota noises. It's smooth. It revs, you know, willingly. Um, really, it just doesn't really have much pull. Uh, um, it's It runs out of breath pretty, you know, pretty early. Um, and, you know, really the sweet spot of this engine to me is kind of right off the line. Toyota's tuned it to feel powerful as soon as you step on the gas. And this car actually feels like it's quicker off the line than the new CRV. And then the CRV, once the turbo kicks in, kicks in, really will leave the rev in the dust. Now the RAV actually gives you paddle shifters, which is something that Honda doesn't offer on the CRV on uh, any trim. And I'm happy to report that the paddles surprisingly are decent in this car. They actually do rev match when you downshift. Uh, and really when you start attacking some back roads in the RAV, uh, the SE model has its own unique suspension tuning. Uh, and you kind of notice it, it feels a little bit firmer um, than the CRV actually. The steering in this car uh, also has been beefed up a little bit. It's you know quick enough, it's precise enough. It doesn't really offer much road feel. Um, although this is better than the last, you know, LE, XLE trim that I drove. But I mean, overall the RAV is just a really pleasant, easy car to drive. I am noticing that it is noisier in here uh, versus the Honda. The road noise is definitely more elevated in this car, uh, but in terms of visibility, excellent visibility. You kind of expect that. You have really great view out of the road. Actually, it's better visibility than the CRV to me. Um, the mirrors are also large. In typical Toyota fashion though, it's got their, you know, Toyota Safety Sense Plus as standard. So every trim level will have, you know, adaptive cruise control, forward collision warning with automatic braking, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, and automatic headlights. That kind of goes a step further versus the, the Honda, which you know you have to buy an EX trim and up, which is what any most people buy. The Honda's um, adaptive cruise, however, will go down to a full speed range. The Toyota's will shut off uh, at uh, like 18 miles per hour. Yeah, the RAV, you know, it feels underpowered to me. Um, so I'll be curious to see what Toyota does with the next generation RAV. I mean, I've already driven the uh, the new Camry with the 2.5 Dynamic Force and 8-speed Auto. That combination would really just fit perfectly in the RAV. Uh, and that, that car has like 206 horses with the quad exhaust. Definitely would give the RAV the boost in power that I'm looking for um, with this particular you know vehicle. It's a fine driving vehicle on the highway. You know, it's comfortable. It's quiet enough, although the Honda, as I said, is quieter still. And fuel economy, um, I've been averaging around 22 and a half miles per gallon, uh, which is definitely less than the Honda. The Honda, I believe I got around like 26 miles per gallon. So that CVT, as much as you guys want to hate on a CVT, is much more efficient, although this kind of gives you, again, that more traditional uh, driving experience that some of you may prefer over the newer turbo, you know, CVT combo on the Honda. But um, let's step into the CRV and see how that drives in comparison to this uh, more traditional uh, Toyota. So first stepping into the CRV after having just drove the RAV4, they both have pretty similar driving experiences. I mean, you both sit up high, um, you have a nice view of the road, although I noticed the CRV has those bulges in the hood, which kind of can confuse some of you, you know, in terms of visibility, you may have to get used to it. I also find the seats comfortable in this car, but I liked how the, the RAV seats hugged you a little bit more. But with this turbo engine and a CVT, the actual acceleration is pretty different versus the Toyota. So let's take a look and see just how different it is. So the CRV also has a sport mode. I'm gonna put it into its sport mode and then floor it. A little bit of lag initially. <laughs> but you know, once it gets going, uh, once you kind of overcome that initial lag, the CRV definitely feels a lot faster than the RAV. I mean, this car has 190 horsepower, so it's more horsepower. It's got a little bit more torque, but really it's how this engine delivers that torque and the power. Uh, because it's turbocharged, um, it's basically the same 1.5 turbo from the Civic, which means it puts out around 17 pounds of boost. I mean, this engine, once the turbo kicks in, is pretty quick. The, Z the CRV should get to 60 in around seven and a half seconds. That makes it about a second and a half second quicker than the RAV. So you're gonna notice that in the real world. Now, the Toyota did feel quicker off the line. 
Um, that's something that some buyers may notice. I mean, most of you who buy a vehicle like this probably aren't going to floor it all the time the way I do, uh, but, but that's kind of where the Toyota feels quicker initially off the line because it doesn't have a turbo, it doesn't have that lag, and it has a conventional six-speed auto. This CVT is definitely one of the better CVTs on the market. Honda does the CVT well, and you know, its responsiveness is, responsiveness is there. When you put your foot down, it instantly changes ratios. It puts the engine right in the sweet spot. It's got very strong mid-range torque. Uh, and in terms of handling, you know, the Toyota is the sportier version with the SE, but the CRV is still the sportier car to drive. The steering in the Honda feels a little bit more linear. It feels like it gives me a little bit more feedback. I like the leather on the wheel as well. It's just a smoother, high quality finish. And, you know, the precision is there. It's nice and, you know, quick responding. Uh, the RAV surprisingly feels like it has a little bit less body roll than this car. Um, the shocks have been tuned a little bit stiffer in the Toyota, uh, but the CRV rides a little bit better. It's quieter. So you do feel, you know, the, the CRV is a newer design. It's a much easier car, you know, on a longer trip because it's a little bit quieter because the ride's softer. That doesn't make the Toyota a bad car. It's just when you drive the two back to back, you're going to notice just how much newer and more stiffer the, the Honda feels versus the Toyota. Now both vehicles come with the uh, manufacturer's full suite of driver assistance tech. Toyota goes a step further by making it standard across the board. Honda you know, forces you to choose an EX and up trim, which is what most of you actually buy to get their Honda Sensing. I have to say the Honda Sensing suite of active safety techs is a little bit better than the Toyota simply because the cruise control in this car has full speed range. It comes to a full stop, whereas the RAVs will shut off at around 18, 20 miles an hour, which I imagine Toyota will fix. Uh, for the newer generations, the new Camry that I just drove had that uh, full stop capability when you had the electronic parking brake. I imagine the new RAV will also have that. The active lane keep assist in this car is a little bit better. It's more aggressive versus the Toyota. It actually, you can feel it actively trying to steer you in place um, when you're, you know, you know, bouncing back and forth between the lanes versus the Toyota is a little bit more subtle. I find the Honda's um, forward collision warning is a little bit more intrusive. It flashes the brake sign and beeps at you whenever you tailgate, whereas the Toyota waits a little bit longer until you really are about to hit somebody before it starts yelling at you. So I did appreciate that feature. But in terms of you know, the visibility in here, uh, I think the RAV is maybe a little bit easier to see out of, but that's not to say this is hard to see out of. You just kind of have to get used to the bulges in the hood. But this car also has big side mirrors. It has blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alerts. So it's a really easy car to drive on a daily basis, just like everything else in this class. So I do like how the CRV's CVT will mimic shifts, which is nice because this engine can get rather loud when you start pushing it. I imagine most of you aren't going to be pushing it as much. The Toyota's engine definitely is quieter, but I like the power um, that this actually gives you, the pull when you actually are in the meat of its torque curve. So in terms of acceleration, I have to give it to the Honda. In terms of ride quality, uh, in terms of you know the, um, the noise levels in here, you know, with the road noise and whatnot, Honda has done a great job of making this car ride really smoothly. Uh, have reduced levels of road noise compared to the Toyota, so I have to give it to the Honda. But again, this is a newer design, so I kind of expected this car to be slightly better in its driving dynamics. The Toyota feels a little bit more traditional. Love the six-speed auto in that car. Uh, it's just, you know, I prefer a traditional transmission like that with its gears. Uh, the 2.5-liter four-cylinder Toyota, you know, it's pretty much what you've expected the last, you know, five, ten years from Toyota. So uh, Honda kind of gives you a newer experience, where Toyota is more of that familiarity. If that's something that you want, you're going to probably prefer the Toyota. But for me, in terms of the driving dynamics, I definitely prefer uh, the newer feel and the more powerful acceleration that the, CR the new CRV gives you. So after spending the day driving both the new CRV and RAV4 back to back, we've already come to the conclusion that the Honda is the quicker vehicle. Thanks to its turbocharged engine, the responsive CVT, this will smoke the RAV in a drag, a drag race. However, in this class of vehicle, you don't buy these to go drag racing. Instead, you're going to buy them because they're practical, because they're comfortable, because they're an excellent family vehicle. And that's what both the RAV4 and the CRV excel at. Now, how, choosing a winner between the two is really going to come, come down to your personal taste. The Honda is obviously the more modern of the two. It's got an updated interior, it's got a more refined interior, it's got Android Auto and CarPlay, it's got a dash design that's definitely more reminiscent of the 21st century. Now the RAV is going to appeal to those of you who prefer something more traditional, lots of knobs and buttons, traditional analog gauge cluster, but in terms of spaciousness, I think the Honda felt a little bit spa more spacious, but the RAV, I found the visibility was a little bit easier thanks to its more traditional, you know, body lines where the boxy shape and then this, you know, those swoopy looks of the CRV kind of cut into the visibility. Now, how do you choose between the two? Now, 
Now, personally, I think I pr would prefer the Honda, and price-wise, the Honda is also the slightly cheaper option, to be honest. The RAV starts around $24,500 for a base um, LE model with two-wheel drive. The Honda is roughly about $500 cheaper, around $24,000 for an LX CRV, at around $1,400 for all-wheel drive. Now, these two models are basically top of the line. The RAV is missing a couple of options. This CRV stickers for around $34,000, $34,700. The RAV is around thirty-two, dollars but it's missing an advanced tech package that would make it around thirty-five five, dollars which is about $1,000 more than the CRV if you're going to look at the MSRPs. Now, because the RAV is an older design, the RAV is actually going to have several higher discounts if you guys are actually going to buy this car. I've seen Toyota dealers discount the RAV between five dollars to $7,000 if you're going to actually go out and buy one of these, versus Honda dealers are only discounting the CRV around two dollars to $3,000, so about half what the RAV is doing. So when it comes down to that, the RAV in the real world may actually be cheaper. But if you guys prefer something with newer tech, don't mind paying a little bit of a higher price. The 2017 CRV is definitely my pick uh, in this red line comparison test. I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the all new 2017 CRV and RAV4. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.